Hey, welcome back everyone. It is time for another Red Hot Covered Call Car Session video, guys. And I'm on the road. You know I want to talk covered calls. Hey guys, today we're going to talk about weekly covered call options and how we make them. Our crumb trades, guys. We knock down 100 bucks, 200 bucks, and we look to do it on three and four and five stocks, guys. Do it all the time. And I want to share with you my playbook. I'm not going to actually show you a trade today, guys. I'm actually going to talk to you about a trade. I'm going to be your coach today. If you like what we're doing here at the channel, though, I need you to subscribe to the channel. And hey, look, man, if you like this video today, bang that like button, guys. It lets me know you like what I'm doing. All right, guys, today I'm going to be your coach. I'm not necessarily going to show you a play or show you a trade. We're going to talk about it, and I'm going to coach you through it. Now, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna talk to you about how I do it. Now again, Salty Dog Cover Call writers may do it a little differently, but hey, I like to trade, this is how I like to do it. So I'm gonna lay it out for you as simply as I can. So, first of all, you know what I like to do. I like to pick my high volume S&P type company stocks, right? I love playing Microsoft and Nike, why? Because they're huge companies, with tons of volume, the institutions love them. And for the most part, guys, in one week, they generally move about $1 either way. If I buy Microsoft at $84, within a week, it'll go to 85 or 83. Doesn't make these huge moves like an Adobe going from 147 to 175 or Square falling from 48 down to 40. You know, these stocks typically just move in a nice little window of $1 in a week. Now guys, what I'm looking to do is write the one week covered call, one deviation out of the money. So what does that mean? If Microsoft's trading at 84, and guys, I'm in the car, okay? So you gotta give me some runway here on these numbers. But if Microsoft's trading at 84, I'm gonna look to sell the one week covered call 84.50. And I'm gonna look to get 50 cents for it, guys. That's gonna be, for the most part, a 0.9 to 1.9% gain, depending on the stock I'm playing. In the case of Microsoft, that's not gonna be a 1.9% gain, but you get my point, guys. I'm looking for that sweet spot on a five-day trade, give me 1%, because guys, if I can do this 25 times a year, 30 times a year, Guys, I'm killing the market. I'm not gonna do it 52 weeks a year, guys. I mean, it's just unrealistic. If we could do this 30 times a year, guys, that's 30 plus percent killing the market every time. So now let's talk about that trade. Say I buy Microsoft at $84, and I write that one week covered call, one deviation out of the money, I get 50 cents for it. So guys, I'm gonna profit ultimately $1. Again, I do this 25, 30 times a year. We're doing good. That's the expectation. Here are two tips that I'm gonna give you that I think's gonna up your game. Tip number one, when I look to write a covered call, a weekly covered call, I don't buy the stock on a Monday for the leading Friday expiration, guys. You can't do it. You're not gonna get the premiums. Why you're not gonna get the good premiums? Because time decay is happening. Remember guys, time decay accelerates quickly in the final week. So guys, when I set up for a nice weekly covered call trade, I actually need to buy my stock on the Thursday, the prior Thursday, because that's the only way I'm gonna get a decent premium for the next Friday's expiration. So what I'm looking to do on that prior Thursday, five, six days, from the expiration Friday, I'm looking to buy that stock. Why? Again, I want a 50 cent premium. Hell, if I can get 60 cents, guys, I'm feeling good. But guys, I'm looking for that nice 50, 60 cent premium. If I buy that stock and we have no volatility on Monday or Tuesday, guys, I'm just not gonna get the premium. It might be 30 cents. I mean, it won't even be worth my time. Well, I'll make less than 100 bucks, but hey, look, that's how I do it. The number two tip is this, guys. You really have to understand once the stock goes above your strike price, because it might happen. You're playing in a short 50 cent window, guys. The stock could easily go above your strike price. 
So the question is, are you gonna buy the option back, then sell the next covered call? Are you gonna let it expire, have your shares taken away? Guys, you have to have a plan, you have to execute the plan. Let's talk about the couple scenarios that can happen if I buy the stock, write the covered call for that Friday's expiration, collecting my 50 cent premium. Let's talk about it. Number one, I write the covered call, the stock never gets above the strike price. I keep my shares, I keep my premium. We look to write the next covered call. Guys, it'll be on that Friday, so I'll have a good five days probably be able to pick up some good premium for the next week. But what if the stock goes above my strike price, guys? This is why I love playing a great company like Microsoft or Nike that doesn't get away from me, guys. It doesn't get away from me. Why? Because when it goes above the strike price, and as we're getting on expiration Friday, guys, we're not going to have any time value in that option. Remember, an option consists of real money and time value. Well, on expiration Friday, guys, we're not going to have any time value. It's going to be pretty much all real money. So if I buy back the option and then immediately sell the shares, alleviating the obligation, then I'll be able to keep the majority of the original premium I got. Because guys, when you buy back your option, it's that time value that cuts into our original premium. I'm probably pointing to you right now at a video I just did on this topic. You need to know it, you need to learn it. Guys, on that expiration Friday, if the stock has gone above my strike price, I'll be honest with you. If it's only a couple pennies here or there of time value I'm gonna give back, guys, I'll give it back so I can write the next covered call, meaning, Let's say, for example, I write that 84.50 and the stock's trading at 84.54. Four pennies over my strike price, guys. My shares are going to be taken away. Even if the guy who bought my option for 50 cents isn't going to make anything. Guys, the market maker will take my shares and profit that four cents. So I got to make a decision. Let my shares be taken away or I can buy that option back for four cents, right? Not 54 cents four cents because guys on expiration friday we're only going to have real money in the option well if the stock is four pennies over the strike price there's only going to be four pennies in the option price so i would buy that option back for four pennies deduct that four pennies from my original premium i go from 50 cent profit to 46 cent profit i alleviate my obligation and guys i'll look to write the next covered call Look to pick up another 50 cents for another out of the money strike. And we do this time and time again, guys. This is how we do it. And this is how you can do your weekly options generating that cash money and your crumbs, guys. Because for me, I love to pick up $100, maybe $150 per week. I love to do it four and five times a week on four and five different stocks guys if you can get it to the point where you're doing it four times a week guys you can profit about four and five and six hundred dollars a week and hey i know you can do it hey look guys i hope you learned something i hope you like this video man be sure to go to my ctp dashboard.com website guys and download the spreadsheets that i use in the videos hey look man we got to keep these numbers in front of us if you don't have your spreadsheets Man, you're just not on top of your game. Hey, look, I do hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. And hey, look, until next time, I hope all your covered calls are profitable. All I see is signs, all I see is dollar signs.